up, my wizards? Deb from SBMTG. Today, we got spoilers. It's still the most wonderful time of the year if you're a Magic player, you know? Spo I just love spoiler season so much. It makes me happy. Um, 13 cards came from the Mothership today. The first real faux shiz official spoiler release from Wizards of the Coast. Well, I'm gonna start with a card that excites me the most, and it's probably because I'm a weirdo. Like, I'm sure that there are other cards that excite people more than this, but I really, really like this card a lot. This is Spatial Contortion right here. Obviously, immediately reminds you of um, Nameless Inversion, right? But a little bit harder to cast. But not, in my estimation, at least in this standard and, by extension, modern and legacy, not that hard to cast at all, really. I mean, in just standard, we've got some um, Blighted Lands, we've got Pain Lands, um, Crucible and Haven of the Spirit Dragon, there's Sanctum of Ugin, Foundry of the Console, Spawning Bed, there's like a million cards that go in decks that aren't just strictly Eldrazi decks, you know? Um, that could that could make this a thing. It's not just an Eldrazi card. I could see, you know, mono green aggro, mono blue aggro, both, you know, decks that want a good removal spell. And if you're playing mono colored, you can play these colorless lands a little more easily. Oh, Seagate Ruins is another one, by the way. It's going to be in this set, produces colorless mana. So you can just keep going. You know, I think that this is a very good removal piece that will see its way into a, maybe, maybe a lot of things. I'm not going to say that it's going to make like weird aggro decks a thing on their own, you know, it's not, not at all that. I just think that it'd be fun on a budget level to include this in, in blue or green aggro. But I do think it'll have applications other than that. I can see this showing up as a one to three of in certain things. And especially in Eldrazi based decks, this is obviously a great piece of removal or a pump spell for your big guys. Siege Rhino, by the way, included in that. There's a couple of big guys, but mostly Eldrazi is what you think about pumping with this, obviously. But I'm done talking about the card for now. I know that it just looks like removal to some people, but I'm actually really excited <laughs> about having great removal and the option for a pump spell in this format. I think this card is really good. This one right here is Stonehaven Outfitter. I usually go in order of how excited I am about cards for spoilers, but I'm not like, I'm trying to temper my excitement for this equipment tempered. Anyway, um, that was really, really bad. But in any case, I think that this could have some applications. There's not that many great equipments in standard, obviously, and this probably could go in the like budget modern equipments deck. I could definitely see it there, obviously. You know, that deck already has a lot of good pieces, but in standard, we've got Relic Seeker is obviously in the format. We don't have a lot of standout equipment. I like, um, what is it, Slab Hammer is a pretty good equipment. Throwing Knife is fine. It's just really a limited all-star throwing knife is. Sword of the Animus is pretty obvious. I mean, there's a couple of other ones. Helm, uh, Helm of the Gods, probably. Um, I'm probably missing a few on There's like Hero's Blade. I could see that. Um, but we just really don't have like standout equipment in standard yet. Um, and I don't know that we'll get it in this set. It might not be relevant until maybe the next block shadows over in Estrada. And Estrada had some pretty good equipment. Um, but we'll, we'll, again, we'll have to wait and see. We will have to wait and see on that. I'm not totally sold on the effectiveness of this, but those are really desirable abilities on top of a fine frame. You know, two mana, two, two. So could definitely have applications in more than one deck, um, especially in modern. Again, the budget modern equipment deck probably wants this. Up next is Jory in uh, Ruin Diver. I, I think this is probably the one that people are most excited about, but from what I've seen, it's also the one people are most polarized and divided on. I mean, there are definitely super spikes who are like, this card will never see play, no matter what, it's terrible. But like, people said the same thing about Jace, you know, so whatever. Um, <laughs> every version of Jace, but I'm talking specifically about Brim's Prodigy. This I see as having some applications, though, like, people are talking about maybe um, Legacy, I don't know, we'll see. Um, but modern Delver type decks, not specifically Delver, but, you know, blue-red decks mostly, or maybe they want this effect. I could see that, sort of the draw, burn, or counter burn decks, and obviously Delver itself. I could see wanting this, but I think it might be a, either a mana too high or the toughness is too low. You know, this is boltable. I don't really like that about it. I wish for three mana that it had four toughness. Or if it's, you know, I, it could be two mana. That'd be, that'd be probably slightly broken. Um, but I can, I can see this being good. I, I don't like the wording on it either. It's just your second spell of the turn, not every spell you play after your first, you know, which would probably also be broken. Um, I just really want this card to be um, better than it is, I guess, is, is what I'm getting out of here. But I guess the stats are fine. A three mana, two, three that can really generate a lot of advantage. And in standard, we've got um, Jeskai Ascendancy is going to be in the format until Shadows of Innistrad comes out. So there's that. And then um, the Noyan Dar deck that uses Jeskai Ascendancy could probably use a card like this. I could, I could definitely see doing that. It would generate a lot of advantage for us. So there are ways in which I like the card, but overall, I may be, first glance, slightly underwhelmed. 
Well, today we got more of the Surge mechanic, and there's a couple of things, well, I think there's one good creature in this batch of Surge cards, but the other two are kind of meh. The first one here is Comparative Analysis, and you can't compare it to Deep Analysis. That's, that was also a stretch right there, but in any case, um, this this is bad. Um, it's, a li it's a limited card, almost certainly, you know. Um, what I really wanted was for this card, um, I've wanted this card for a while since I saw the Surge mechanic, I wanted it to just cost two, and you draw a card, or you surge for one mana. I, I, I wanted that instead. Um, what we got is definitely a very limited playable card. I do like the instant speed on it. Um, but we'll have to see about standard. I'm just, I'm not sure. Maybe the Sphinx's Tutelage deck. But hey, Sphinx's Tutelage. I can totally see that happening. Other than that, I'm just not sure. I don't think Control wants this over other options right now. This is Tyrant of the Valakute right here while we're looking at surge cards. If you surge it out, it's probably really, really good. I mean, you bolt something on the fifth turn, you get a big flying body just for five mana. But that's, I mean, we're talking about on the fifth turn, that's going to be hard considering you have to surge it out. You have to cast another spell, right? So I'm just, I'm not totally sold. When I first looked at this, I was like, maybe Inferno Titan looking slightly, but it's not. It's not. It costs a mana more a lot of the time, you know. I mean, if it does cost a mana more, it's not going to give you the Inferno Titan ability. You know, you can't divide the damage. Nothing happens when it attacks, I and mean, it's not Inferno Titan at all. I don't know why I thought that when I first looked at it. Um, a limited all-star, absolutely. Like a lot of these cards we saw today are limited all-stars. But I'm just, we'll have to wait and see about standard. I'm not, I don't think this will work, especially while better sets are in the format. This, on the other hand, is Reckless Bushwhacker. I think this is a great card. Red gets a flexible creature in the three drop slot. You know, you'll probably play it on the three drop whether you're surging it or not. You can play a one drop creature and then this on turn three and swing for a sizable amount, you know. Or what I was thinking too in Goblins, Goblins really wants this card. Um, what you can do in Goblins is on the fourth turn play a Goblin Pile Driver and then surge this out, swinging with both of them. I think that'd be a really, really good play, right? Um, especially while we've still got, you know, on the third turn you could Hordling Outburst and then a curve into this with a Goblin Pile Driver. That'd be super sweet on the fourth turn. So I think Goblins, this is a really good piece for that deck. And it's got two other relevant creature types on top of that, you know. So just, it could go in a lot of stuff. I definitely think it's geared very well for standard play. We'll have to see about Modern. I don't think the Modern Goblin deck really wants this. We'll have to see. Um, I'm probably not. But standard, I think this could be a really good card for the Goblins deck. Not only that, but tokens producing decks, you know, you could also on the fourth turn, like Dragon Fodder and then play this and then swing with the guys and they get bone, they get, you know, plus one plus oh. That, that'd be, that seems pretty good too. So just don't, look out for this guy. I think he's actually really relevant. Today we got our first look at the support mechanic and I, I'm just, I'm not a totally sold on this. Maybe I'll have to play with it. It looks like it plays better than it reads. First card I'm going to show you is Gladeheart Cavalry. This card costs an awful lot of mana, and you it's the way Bolster... Wait, bolster. The way um, support reads to me, it's like Bolster. The way it reads, like, you have to have that many creatures, you know, like, you can't put, like, four counters on one thing, and one counter on another, and one counter on another. You have to have that many guys, which, that's, that's kind of a hindrance, but at, at its best, this is something like 12 power for 7 mana, I guess. That's fine. Um, gaining the life when they die, I guess, is fine gravy, but at the end of the day, it's 7 mana, and this is a limited bomb, and probably nothing else. This is a little bit better, maybe. This is shoulder to shoulder. I don't think this is, like, standard playable, really. I mean, drawing a card is fine. I just, it needs to be instant speed for it to really be a card. Um, obviously, it's limited playable, you know, probably at least. I mean, for three mana, I'd sometimes rather either play removal or a creature. I'm just not, unless you're playing the deck that does this, I'm not even sure I play this in limited, maybe sealed more so than draft. Um, but actually, I might flip that. But anyway, anyway, um, I just, I, I'm not a huge fan of the support mechanic at all from what I've seen so far. But again, maybe it'll play better than it reads. It strikes me as that kind of thing. And there are definitely interactions in the format, you know, Hangerback Walker is definitely one. Um, Den Protector, you put enough counters on it, it becomes basically unblockable. Um, so I can see, I can see support if there's a card good enough being a, a good mechanic and standard, but this definitely looks like the mechanic that's geared towards limited that you see in like every set. So, but I do like this card a little bit better than the first one I, I previewed there, Gladeheart Cavalry. I like this a little bit better. It seems more functional. You know, two guys get a counter, you draw a card, that's always good. It replaces itself. But at the end of the day, it's strictly limited. We have to look at one more ability, um, one more mechanic in this set so far. There, I think there's going to be one more. Um, we got Cohort right here, which is on uh, Mundus Vanguard. The only thing that we've seen so far with Cohort is tap it and another ally you control, which is kind of a steep cost. I'm just not sure about like five mana allies you know there's the one that I think it's Hero of Gomafada gives all your guys indestructible I'm not even really a huge fan of that and I know it has its its fans you know but I'm, I just don't like five mana like aggro creatures unless they're like 
insane. And I just, I don't know that this guy is on that level. I'm going to finish up with um, the Eldrazi that they spoiled today. The rest of the cards are all Eldrazi. That, that's a fine amount of Eldrazi right there. Um, the very first card is Scion Summoner. Just want to get this out of the way, honestly. This card looks like it should have been in BFZ, right? Like, it just looks like one of those cards that does this and is this, you know? Definitely limited playable. Three power for three mana. Split among two creatures. That's fine. Won't see standard play. This is Walker of the Waste, which at least looks interesting. Assuming that you've played nothing but Wastes in your colorless deck, this enters play as a 9-9. I mean, you know, maybe, see that, uh, maybe. Um, but even in your colorless deck, you won't play just like 25 Wastes. You know, you'll play Foundry and Spawning Bed and a bunch of other stuff, you know, um, Sanctum. There's a ton of things you'll play. Um, so it won't be just Waste. But assuming this can be a 9-9 on turn 5, I guess that sounds good. Maybe a budget deck. I could see this being a good budget card, but I don't think it'll see, you know, real standard play. Um, but, you know, even if it gets bigger as the game goes on, maybe that's a thing, but we just have so many better options at five mana right now. This here is Deep Fathom Skulker. Um, this kind of feels like a side grade to um, Drowner of Hope from BFC to me. Just, uh, they're not similar cards or anything. They're just, you know, both big guys with the blue splashable costs and they do stuff, you know. It's, I don't know why. It just it reminds me of Drowner. Um, this is probably better. Just <laughs> I can see one thing that it does, first of all, is that it can affect the board to turn it into the, the battlefield. That's good. You know, you play it, you swing with some guys, hopefully a, a couple of them get three, you draw two or three cards. That could be relevant. Also, him being able to let creatures go unblocked is pretty bomby. Again, a limited bomb. Probably won't see play in standard, but that being able to draw cards when you swing in with guys is pretty good. I mean, this would be a cool... I could maybe, like, this is so dumb, but, like, stop your spy network in this and just drawing all the cards. Um, I could, I could, maybe, you know, whatever. Um, that would be a terrible deck. But, <laughs> all things considered, I think this is just not quite there for standard play or really anywhere else other than limited. But the card is very, very interesting. Last card I want to talk about is Dread Defiler right here. Dread Defiler, again, super interesting to me. You know, I saved him for last because I like him more than a lot of the other Eldrazi that were spoiled today. I just, I'm not sure, again, that he's quite there for standard. Limited Bomb, also, I think that's the last time I'll have to say that. Limited Bomb. But in standard, well, we'll have to see. Um, I, I definitely think he costs an awful lot of mana um, for what he does. You know, it's... And he costs mana, so much mana to use his ability. I, I, I'm not entirely sold, but I do like the fact that you could, like, pitch an Ulamog somehow, end up dealing 10 to them. This works with Torn Elemental pretty hilariously, so there are some things, but, like, Barrage Tyrant didn't see play at all, and Barrage Tyrant is arguably a better card than this, for all intents and purposes. That's pretty much all for the spoilers today. It's spoiler season now, so they're going to start happening nearly every single day. Stick with us, subscribe if you're new, because there's going to be a ton of spoilers. And I love, this is like one of my favorite things to do as a Magic YouTuber is cover spoilers and, and see whether I'm like, I'm good at Magic. <laughs> like, in the end, I did say that Kithian wasn't going to see much standard play, and guess what? Kithian's not seeing much standard play. And everyone gave me so much crap for that. All I'm saying is evaluation is my occupation. I love evaluating cards. It's one of my favorite things about Magic. But enough of that. This is up if you're new, you know, that'd be super awesome if you did that. And just stick with us for all the spoilers. This is Igby. I'm Devin from SBMTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards. Bye, Igby.